Hey, I'm Alec, and today we're gonna make a neon sign. First, I needed the acrylic backing for the sign in the shape of the Matter Hackers logo, so I utilized the Shapeoko Double XL and some double sided tape to hold it down, and then drilled some pilot holes for some screws that will then really securely hold it together. Now, it did crack it a little bit, so I may want to use a larger pilot hole, but this will hold it just well enough for the Shapeoko to do its work. Once that was cut out, it was really easy to release it from the double-sided tape. I just needed to deburr the edges a bit so they were nice and smooth and not too rough. So, I have this pattern entirely printed out of what we're trying to uh, make our neon sign out of, and I just need to piece this together. I'm gonna use some blue painter's tape just to hold it all up. It doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to be there so I can see what does the shape actually look like. We'll lay it under the acrylic, and then I'll have something to follow with the LED strips. So let's get to it. We did some graphic design to create the path for the neon lights, and that doubled as creating a vector file for us to use on the CNC. So we were able to do two purposes with one design and be able to create this. Then from there, I laid the acrylic on top and spaced it accordingly to make sure I had about a half inch around all sides. We wanted to use brackets to hold the neon lights on securely, so I just jumped into Matter Control, did some quick designing, made sure it fit, and got printing. Now you might have noticed the holes in these brackets, and that's because I intended to use screws and nuts to hold this to the acrylic, but hot glue actually held it on pretty securely where I didn't need to bother using them. I first had to find the start point of this strip of neon lights, and then weaved it through the bracket until the end, where I grabbed a spacer piece to see how long do I need to cut it and still have it end right at the next section of neon light. Started using my pocket knife, eventually switched over to the X-Acto knife because that was just a lot cleaner and sharper. Then I did a little soldering, connecting the LED strips to each other using just some wire that I spliced, soldered, and tinned to make sure everything was a nice and solid soldering joint. Then I weaved it back on through, and we'll do that again once I hit the other end. And then a quick test to make sure it works. Now I had these strips of LEDs that I took out of a section of scrap just to measure where does each section start and end so I could make sure that they were totally lit. Because in the M here there's a lot of turns and I want to make sure there's no dim spots because if I cut between there while the whole strip will still work there will still be a dead spot. Once I did that I just measured everything out, cut a bunch of wire, did a bunch of soldering, chained it all together and then weaved it through the bracket. The sections without brackets I just super glued on that held really well. To keep the circle and the Matter Hackers logo really clean, I designed another bracket matter control with a little wire cut out so that the wires leading to the other lights had somewhere to go. A little hot glue to stick it on, weave through the LED lights, and it's perfect. Now that all the LEDs are done, I just need to hook this up to the power supply with a long wire extension and we're good to go. I went back into matter control to design some standoffs, which is going to suspend the acrylic off of the wall instead of being flat up against it. I just used a lot of different cylinders and some really loose measurements so that I had a piece that was behind the acrylic, one that would go through the acrylic and capture the screw, and then a cap to go over it so you don't see the screw when it's on the wall. Now from here I did use a spade bit to drill through the acrylic. I did a lot of testing and there was a lot of cracking and shattering with just a regular drill bit at the right size, but a spade bit cut through really nicely and then I cleaned it up with a drill bit of the right size. I attached one standoff at the top so that I could mount this up against the wall and figure out where I needed to place the holes for the other ones. I used the level to make sure it was straight, and then with a sharpie marked the center of the other five holes, took it down, and then drilled through using a vacuum to suck up all the drywall dust. From there, I could just insert the anchors and then hammer them in. To make it easier, I went ahead and put the screws through the caps and then through the standoffs so that they were all one piece and then they could hang this up on the wall really nicely, starting with the top one and drilling into that one and then going around and loosely screwing through the rest. Once I had screwed them all in loosely, I went back and screwed them in really tight to make sure that it was a nice firm grip up against the wall and wasn't going to fall away. Once the screws are tightened on, I put on the blue printed caps so they blend in with the lights and we're good.
This build was a lot of fun. I got to utilize 3D printing and CNC carving to create this really awesome neon sign. And if you want to create one of your own, I did write up an article that includes the plans and tips and tricks in order to be able to make a sign of your own. Now, if you enjoy weekend builds, be sure to click the like button down below or the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. See you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.